tell somebody I can depend on God. Woo! Ah, oh, through the rain, through the storms, I can depend on God. Come on, give God a good praise as they keep on playing. your name and said, I'm still here because I've been depending on God. Come on, give God a real loud praise right there. I've been depending on God. Come on, tell him I've been depending on God. He's been faithful. He's been kind. He's been wonderful. He's been my everything. Oh, has he been your everything? You ought to witness to somebody say he's been my everything. Woo! Through the monkey pox, through the pandemic, through all the storms, through all the layoffs, he's been faithful and he's been a good God. Tell your neighbor, I got something to thank God for. to see my family come in. Amen. The preacher of the hour. He, boy, I tell you, I'm tempted to tell him, come on up here and bring the word and me sit back. Right. Amen. But I don't see his robe with him. <laughs> Isn't God wonderful? I don't know about you, but there's nothing I would trade for my journey now. I tell you, the enemy could have got me when I first started. But he messed up by allowing me to hang in there. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, he might as well go on and mess with somebody else. Because I'm all the way in now. Come on, tell your neighbor, I'm all the way in. Back in my DJ years, amen, there was a song that says, amen, I'm all the way in. Come on, see, when you get all the way in... You can't see the fence. You can't see the borderline because you done made up in your mind there's no turning back. Am I talking to anybody this morning that there's no turning back? It's all the way lives. How y'all, I'm, I know all you, you, as my age, amen, remember that song, all the way live. Amen, ain't nothing dead here. You ought to tell your neighbor, ain't nothing dead here. Amen, push the right button, I'll shout all over you. I'll leap for joy. I'll, I'll dance, 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 dance till I can't dance no more. God's been that kind of good to me. He brought me out. He healed my body. He supplied my needs. He opened doors. He made the devil run. I got something to praise God for. Am I by myself? Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name. Together. Magnify him. Because he's worthy. Tell your neighbor, I got a, I got a reason to praise the Lord. If you knew what my story was like, you'll, you'll join in and help me shout. You'll join in and give God glory. You'll join in and say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, I wish I had somebody. Ow! something to praise God for. I don't know what your testimony is like, but I do know mine. 
and when medical science give up on you and God says not so, come on, nobody going to beat me shouting and thanking God. I got a reason. Let me stop because we got communion and I don't want to be prolonging your time. But I'm not in a hurry. Don't even get it twisted. When you think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for you, I don't know about you, but my soul is hollering right now. Thank God for saving me. If he didn't save nobody else, I'm glad. I'm here to give him thanks for saving me. Woo! Because if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would be. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Won't he do it? Tell your neighbor he'll do it every time. Woo! Good God Almighty. I feel like shouting John about now. I feel a shout in my spirit. I feel a leap in my soul. I feel like running around the whole church. Let the world know God has been good. That's all right. Get it in while you can. Get it in while you can. Woo! Yes, sir. Get it in. Get it in. Get it in. Woo! It's been good. Woo! He's that kind of God. He's that kind of God. I don't know, but I hear the Holy Ghost saying if you shout right now, you're going to get a breakthrough in your situation. If you shout right now, there's an abundance coming in your direction. If you give me glory right now, I'll answer that prayer. You ought to get... Woo! Hey! you come to do but I come to bless his name I come to give him glory I come to look ugly I come to lift my hand I come to raise my feet whatever you do God please don't pass me by this morning because I came expecting a great and mighty move in my life is that your testimony then give God a good praise He's been good. He's been better than good. I got a reason that I shout like I do. I got a reason why I run around like I do. Without a reason, I'll die and dry up. But because he's alive, I shall live. Is there anybody out there hearing me? I shall live. And I shall not die. The devil is defeated. Can I get a witness? The devil is defeated. Look at your neighbor said the devil is defeated. Woo! Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Don't get it twisted. You might see me cry sometime. Don't get it twisted. You might see me looking funny at times. Don't get it twisted. God has been good. Tell your neighbor God has been good. Woo! My soul do, my soul do magnify the Lord. He's a good God. Can I get a witness? He's been a good God. 
He brought me out. He brought me through. He's been good preaching. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. You ought to tell three people, hang on in there. You ain't seen nothing yet. Come on, move around and tell somebody. You ain't seen nothing yet. You think you done had something. You think you done experienced something. God's not through. God's not finished. He's got more than you can imagine. He's got more than you can tell. God got a plan. I wish I could talk to somebody. God's got a plan to bring you out. God's got a plan to give you more than enough. God's got a plan. God's got a plan for you. Don't stop now. Tell your neighbor, don't stop now. Whoa! I don't even know how to get into this word this morning. But I'm happy to be on the Lord's side. I'm happy that I'm healed from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. I am happy to see you. I'm happy to see you. You ought to tell somebody, I'm happy to see you. another way but I'm glad he made a way go on and just shout it out right now It's all right. Tell your wife it's all right. Woo! It's all right. Brother Ernie, go and tell your wife it's all right. It's all right. Come on, witness to somebody. Tell me it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. My God, the woman's son was died dead. And they asked him, said, is everything all right? She said, it's all right. Come on, testify. It's all right, Mary. It's all right, Mary. It's all right, Sharon. It's all right. Sherelle. Sherelle. I hear the Lord say this month, before it's all over, something great is about to happen. Come. Oh, 
you ought to help us shout right there. Something great. Tell your neighbor, help me stir my Holy Ghost. your neighbor, help me stir my Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. Why you think he said, oh magnify the Lord with me. Stir my Holy Ghost. Help me get excited. Yes, help me stir my Holy Ghost. I believe the song said somebody ought to catch on fire. Catch on fire. My, my, my. Catch on fire. Look at somebody say, just catch on fire. <laughs> Woo! If y'all sit down, I might be able to go ahead. Ah, yes, Lord. Somebody's soul ought to catch on fire, catch on fire, catch on fire. Do you know that song? Come on up here. Good in the Holy Ghost. Oh, I want somebody's soul would. Oh, I want somebody's soul would. Hey, burn with the Holy Ghost. Lord, I wish somebody so would. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I wish somebody so would. Well, I wish somebody so would. Oh, yeah. Lord, I wish somebody so would. Oh. Catch on fire, 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 let him burn you, burn you up, let him fill you with the Holy Ghost, yeah, 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 was somebody's whole wood, oh, Oh, I, Lord, I wish somebody so would. Look at somebody, tell them I'm burning up. Tell them I'm burning up. If you get too close to me, you'll catch on fire too. Good old sanctified hallelujah, glory to God, praise and thanksgiving, shouting, dancing. Don't mind looking ugly. Amen. Giving God the glory. Amen. Thank God for gifted musicians that will help stir. Amen. The enemy had to run out of here because he can't stand the praise of God. Anything that was worrying you ought to be off you now. You ought to feel lighter, freer, happier, satisfier. You ought to be free. Woo! If you ain't get free after all that, you must be deaf, dumb, and wondering. Come on, somebody. 
Because there's something about praising God that a light show fire when you do it for real now. Hey, tears will get to running. Feet will get to moving. Oh, spirit get to leaping. My, 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 my. You'll have a testimony say, I never thought I could feel like this again. Amen. And to God be the glory. Come on, put those sanctified hands together. I wish I was a hooper like Bishop, but I, 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 I always start off like a shotgun in the beginning. And if you don't shout with me in the beginning, guess what? Later on, you ain't going to be shouting. Well, I done shot my load. And now we just going to get into some teaching. Amen. And if I, if I need a tag team, I'm glad I got some help. But God is good, my God. Son, daughters here in the midst, amen. They took off the road to come and encourage their spiritual dad. Amen, and I'm so glad, amen. I got a, you know, there's a whole lot of people came out of deliverance now. You better, you better know, whole lot of folk. Amen, and I'm so glad we're still connected. I made Apostle Arturo Skinner said deliverance will be taking the land. And you know what, as I evaluate and I see certain places, amen, and I see signs of deliverance, amen. I'm not talking about just the name. I'm talking about folk getting delivered. Look at your neighbor and say, God has delivered me. And that's what coming to church is all about. The word should irritate you. I, I, it, the church is like a washing machine. Uh-huh. You, you don't put clothes in the washing machine and just let it just sit dormant. Amen. There's some agitation going on. If the word don't agitate you, 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 you just ain't born again. You satisfied with where you are. But if you are trying to seek the face of God, every now and then he's got to agitate you. Amen. Because he's trying to, won't he make you clean inside? And the only way you can get clean, you got to be agitated. Because agitation brings friction. And friction brings, amen, cleaning. Amen. He said, you think I came to bring peace. <laughs> but I came to bring some agitation. I come to get on your last nerve. So your nerve will get in line with God's nerve. So you can be the child of God God called you to be. Amen. Look at your neighbor if you really got it in you. And tell you I know God called me. So when he corrects me, I ain't going to be by with no attitude. Wash me, Lord. Come on, tell him. Wash me, wash me. Wash me through and through. That I may have a clean heart. And renew within me a right spirit. Uh, Y'all don't want to talk about that. I never feel like I have arrived. Oh, yeah. Apostle, you still be seeking God for deliverance? Yes. Who shall deliver me from this body of death? Amen. So we got to realize that you, you, you'll never arrive, but you're always in pursuit. I want to do better. And if I keep on keeping on and being in the services of God, something's got to happen. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, something got to happen. Something happened right, th right today. <laughs> I'm just going to take it by faith. And for you that are viewing us on Facebook, oh, you missed an opportunity. Because you can't shout like this on your couch with nobody with you. There's something about being in the atmosphere. Tell your neighbor, thank you for pressing this moment. Because you helped me make this service what it is right now. Give God a good hand clap and let us get ready to go into the word of God. I like to use for a thought on today. What are you receiving? What are you receiving? I like that melody right there. Just stay right there. 
What are you receiving? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we just had a shouting experience. But in your shout, what did you receive? Because see, God can minister to you even while you're in your praise. While you're yet, amen, putting them up and putting them down. A matter of fact, the Bible says, don't quench the Holy Ghost. And sometimes in that experience, sometimes people try to shake the feeling of, I might not look right. But God said, don't shake or resist his presence because if he touches you and you run around this church guess what you might have somebody run with you you don't you don't know what god is trying to do in the elements of your praise and so i got to ask the question what are you receiving to some it may be a foreign experience and that's all right you keep hanging around the fire after a while, there's going to be a break if your heart is open. Stop investigating God and let go and let God have his way. Am I talking right? But my thought today is what are you receiving? And it was kind of hard to try to stay focused on this message and even in the midst, I, I don't know what God may do, uh, but, but even in preparation, the other morning I woke up and I, I began to dwell on relationships. Don't you know relationships are under fire? It is because the enemy knows that the very first thing that God created was family. And if you can't see that families are under attack, you blind. I don't want to add dumb because that would be more truth. Your family is targeted by the enemy. Come on, look at somebody and say, your family is targeted by the enemy. I don't, I don't know if you know the scriptures, but the Bible says... That Satan has a desire to sift you as we. That's his desire. And what I've learned over the years is that our desire has to be greater than his. Because if not, we're going to succumb to the foolishness of the element. Of our society. That's why I sent out the text. Amen this week. I sent out two videos. From YouTube. To encourage men. And women. About relationships. And for those that I kind of. Knew might have gone through some hurts. I sent them an extra. Video how to recover from someone who has wounded you that you love and how can you continue to go on relationships are in trouble y'all yeah. even in the church because it's the church that the enemy is trying to destroy and what does he have to start with he has to start first of all with husband and wife I had a conversation with my wife and I said both of us <laughs> are imperfect stop looking at your spouse like you got it all together you just as crazy as a bed bug because you don't have it all together the Bible says pray ye one for another am I in the book the Bible says, pray ye one for another, what? That ye all might be healed. Look at somebody next to you and say, life has scarred you. Come on, you got to stop messing with me right there. Come on. <laughs> life has scarred you. Now you're faking the funk like you all right. 
But you got scars all over you. And if you don't seek God's help, you'll destroy the very thing that God put in your life to bless you. I know I ain't getting a whole lot of help in here, but that's all right. I got what I wanted. I got my shout in. I got my shout in. Look at your neighbor and say, I got my shout in. So nothing the preacher said right now is going to hinder my praise because I got it in already. Don't be offended because God deals with you and tell you you ain't right. You know you ain't right. You can fake it all you want to. But guess who know you ain't real? There's two, there's really three people that know you where, where you are besides you. And if you're married, it's God, the devil, and your spouse. And that's who the enemy wants you to really fight with is your spouse. I told my wife, I said, listen here. Thank God you got a man that's trying to do right. Notice what I said. I didn't say I had it right. I said, I'm trying to do right. Now don't help me do wrong. Help me to do right. Sweep around your own front door. <laughs> see, 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 we, we, you, y'all remember, now, I'm, I'm, before I get into text, I'm just laying some fundamentals out here. I sent you all a cartoon, a graphic with the number six. And it was laying down on the floor and one person was on this side and one person was on this side. And as this person, y'all remember, now I'm, 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 before I get into the text, I'm just laying some fundamentals out here. I sent you all a cartoon, a graphic with the number six. And it was laying down on the floor and one person was on this side and one person was on this side. And as this person looked on at this, the, the, the number, it looked like a nine. But the person on this side looked at it, and it looked like a six. And what, am, what, what, what was my point in sending you all that? It was to tell you from your own viewpoint, you look like you're right. See, everybody looked like they're right in their own eyes. And we spend so much time digging our feet into the ground and drawing lines because we're not going to budge because we think we're right. But the little cartoon shows that both parties from their own perspective felt that they were right, and they were. And while they both are arguing about who's right, they're wasting time. I'm too old to keep wasting time. I'm getting ready to be 67 years old. I'm too young to keep fighting. I don't know about you. Ain't you tired of fighting? Come on, look at your neighbor. Ain't you tired of fighting? When we gonna start enjoying the abundant life? You know when you're gonna start enjoying it? When you take the number six and throw it out the way and look at each other and say, I appreciate you with your crazy self. I know you're crazy, and you know mine. I don't know about you, but I ain't going out there getting somebody else. Because you might get something crazier than what you got. You ought to look at your spouse and say, at least I know what I got. With your bad self. Come on now. I told my wife, I ain't got no escape plan. I'm like a penguin. Don't you know a penguin marries for life? Even when its spouse dies, it remains alone because they made its choice. Other oh, devil, look at your wife. Say, with your bad self. <laughs> That's right. The enemy is after us. That's right. He's after us. Old girly girl looking all sweet and perfume and telling you everything you want to hear. Don't be crazy. You'll be a fool to leave what you have already established. To run after something that only you only last 30 seconds with. I ain't going to touch that. You'll catch that 3 o'clock in the morning. 
but it's time now, and, and I need to, even while I'm yet talking, what are you receiving? Don't be walking around talking, well, pastor, somebody been talking to pastor. Let me tell you something. Your story ain't no different than nobody else's. Now, you might try to look like it's all, oh, hey, we got a rocket. Yeah, there's some rocks stored in your fist. We all working out our own salvation with fear and trembling. And nobody has arrived. Let me get off of this. God, I think y'all done had enough. Come on up for air. Maybe we need to go back and have some more shout music waking back up. Or, so they put them stones down that they want to throw at me. Amen. The one that's talking about you is God trying to get our attention. That's all. God trying to get your attention. What was that, what was that song on, on, on uh, Color Purple? God trying to tell you something? Come on, look at five people. I'm going to see if you know how to count. T look at five people and say, God trying to tell you something. trying to tell you something. Some of y'all just counted to two. That's why you ain't gonna get a full return. You don't know how to count. Well, let me, that's enough of me picking. And let me get into sermon. No, don't go for, don't go to I read the scripture. Back it up. Back it on. Back up to my graphic. I spent a lot of time making these graphics. Back it up. I gotta show off my hard work. Okay. He can't seem to back it up. So we'll leave it right there. Open up your Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 5, I mean 8, verse 5. Acts chapter 8, verse 5. And the Bible says, and then Philip, then, somebody say then. then. It is amazing that everything in your life that's happening to you is in God's plan. The problem we have is that we're trying to fi figure out why this is happening to me. Why is this not going right? But even in your dilemma, God is working some things out. The Bible says then, then. What do you mean then? There was persecution that was going on in Jerusalem. But I don't know about you, but I, every time I see persecution on a child of God, I always see expansion. Uh, you need to understand that some of the afflictions that you deal with in life is God really growing you if you act in faith. I'm on a series on Wednesday nights. I don't know if you all tune in on Facebook on Wednesday night, but I'm dealing with a series talking about the meaning of faith. And here we find that the Bible says, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and he preached Christ. He did what? He preached Christ unto them. Let's get out of the politics. Let, let's get out of personal businesses of people. And let's get back to preaching the Bible. Let's get back to preaching the word of God where the possibility of deliverance is available. Philip used to be a deacon. He was chosen to serve tables. And because he was faithful. Oh, good God. See, some of us want to do the works of God, but we want to do it in the prescription of our own mindset. But Philip apparently... Even though you don't hear nothing about Philip too much, all of a sudden he comes out of nowhere. It is amazing that sometimes you think God don't recognize your sacrifice. But God keeps good records. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, payday after a while. <laughs> You think you've been crying alone and you've been talking to God saying, Lord, why? You've been dealing with some things and God says, keep on hanging in there. I got something for you. It's not in vain. 
So he moves from being a deacon because it was now time. We get frustrated because things don't work as fast as we want them. But see, God is at point C while you're still at A. And he's already got B already lined up. He doesn't want to move you before he completes your advancement until he straightened out some stuff. Even when he brought the children of Israel from out of bondage, he had to take them the long way because they weren't ready to fight. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God's not moving you to the next level until you can learn how to fight. Because every level got a new demon. Every level, oh, I wish I could talk to somebody. And if you can't handle the demon on the level you are, you definitely don't want to move before God pushes you to the next level. So it was the persecution of the Christians that caused them to scatter because increase was about to happen for the kingdom. But in the midst of the persecution, as I always say, God has a plan. Some of you are in marital situations. God got a plan. Some of y'all are dealing with children. God got a plan. Some of y'all dealing with church folk. God got a plan. Some things are not the way you want them, but God has a plan. God got you on that job as a beacon of light. As the ships are in storms and can't find a way, you are that light. And while you're yet in the storm, your light got to keep shining because somebody's going to find sure because of you. I wish I could talk to somebody. So persecution had hit, amen, Jerusalem. But the purpose of the persecution is so that God's plan could go forth. Sometimes we get too comfortable with our lives. So God has to allow some uneasiness, some situation to help you get back to prayer, help you get back to the word, and help you to get back to depending on him. You sing the song, I can depend on God. But can you really? Can you depend on him when you're uncomfortable? Can you depend on him when things are not going well? Can you depend on him when money looks funny and you ain't got the bills to be a, you ain't got the money to pay the bills? Can you depend on God? It caused them to scatter so that they could go about their father's business. Look at your name and said, let's stop being at ease in Zion. Last time you gave somebody a track? When the last time you talked to somebody about Jesus? When, when have you lifted up his name? The Bible says in verse 6, it says, And the people with one accord gave heed unto the things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing, hearing and what? Hearing, hearing and seeing the miracles uh, which he did. Now it's strange, but yet we see fulfillment in the scriptures that, amen, this city called Samaria, Jesus had visited three years before. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, some things that God shared with you at the time he shared it, you wasn't ready. But I'm so glad that God don't give up on us. That's, a, that's enough to give a shout to God right there. Is that even though I wasn't ready to receive what he has said, he didn't throw me away. You know, as I was riding to the church this morning, I heard the Holy Ghost say, God can use leftovers. 
That means I might have missed it, but he can still use me. I might didn't do it when he told me, but I, he still can use me. I might have to catch up. And I'm not talking about for a hot dog. I'm talking about I got to catch up. Because sometime I'm lagging behind what he told me to do, but he didn't throw me away. Ooh, I don't know who the Holy Ghost. Look at your neighbor and say, let the Holy Ghost talk to you now. So Jesus had came to this area three years before Philip. And guess what? He did not do no miracles there. The miracle worker was right in the midst of their lives and missed it. Stop blaming the church. Stop blaming church people and depend on God. Because while you're complaining about people and you are people, you missed the opportunity to receive. I heard a song this week and it says, instead of complaining, I dare you to praise him. So he had already been there before, three years earlier. But you ought to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, his visitation is never wasted. <laughs> oh, God. I hope I can help somebody through this. See, because of the mixture. Now, now the reason why that Jesus could not do many miracle works is because of the unbelief. There was a mixture in that community, in that region. That's why the Jews had nothing to do with the Samaritans. Because, amen, they did not believe that they were worthy. Jesus, even at the point, told them, don't go to the city of Samaria because he knew they weren't ready. I want to talk to somebody. You need to stop messing with folk that ain't ready. I wish I could help somebody. You need to stop getting on people's nerves after you have shared what the gospel has delivered. Because all you're going to do is stand in the way of a sinner and they're going to hurt you. <laughs> Jesus did not try to push the kingdom on people that weren't ready. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, watch yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> and so, Jesus didn't force anything upon him. He just left well alone because he understood believing wasn't enough. If you recall, there was a woman that met him in Samaria, the woman at the well. She was excited. She was on fire because she said, I met a man Good God, that told me all about myself. See, see, we're not like, you know, a lot of people are not like the woman from Samaria. Because, see, when you get to telling people about themselves, there's a spirit that will rise up. There's an attitude that will rise up. There's a disposition that will rise up. You know why? Because they're still flirting with demons. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. If you love your demon, you'll fight the truth. And you can't be delivered from a demon you like. No matter who pray for you. Wish I could talk to somebody. Because see, believing ain't enough. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Just believing is not enough. Look at what James says in 2.19. The Bible says, are there still some among you who hold that only believing is enough? <laughs> believing in one God? Well, remember, uh-oh, here's the kicker. Remember that demons believe 
this too. So strongly that they are terrified or in terror. So when you see people who say they believe in God, but don't release their demons, because the demons are terrified that you might accept Jesus. I believe in God, but still let me do what I want to do. And that is not faith, that's just belief. Let me say that on this side, because y'all look like y'all are happy and you still got your masters on. Just believing doesn't maintain no power. Because you can believe and still won't get delivered. I'm still going to do my thing because I do believe that there's something. Something is talking to you. Something telling you to do that. But it's not telling you to do right. Oh, they cried out with a song, Tina said, what does love got to do with it? <laughs> Don't you play that song. <laughs> Hands in this direction. <laughs> Look at what verse 20 says. Verse 20 says, you are a fool. See, I'm not, I'm not bold enough to call you one. I might think it, but I ain't ready to fight you. For you to believe only and think you are all right with God, the Bible declares you a fool. Because you can't say you believe God, still live raggedy, and think you pleasing God. You a fool. Am I in the book? Listen to what he says. When will you ever learn... That believing is useless without doing what God wants you to do. Now that's a smacking, oh good God Almighty. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm so glad the preacher didn't say it. Because now I got to deal with God. Now give the Lord a hand clap. Boy, y'all shouted so long, my time. Can I finish it? Oh, I, uh, uh, oh what? Listen to this. Look at this. Look at this, look at this. He said, listen here. It's useless without doing what God wants you to do. Faith that does not result in good deeds is what? Not real faith. Child, I believe God. But are you married? Because I know you're still shocking. Oh, I done lost somebody on Facebook. You say you believe God, but you're not supporting your church. Uh-oh, I'm so glad nobody didn't get up and walk out. <laughs> see, 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 truth. We'll spend $150 on a hairstyle and some nails. Or a suit. Or a tie. Bishop like hats. Or buy a hat. He got a whole lot of hats. Every time I see him on Facebook, he go, he, I, I think he got a room just with hats. I don't even think y'all can match up with you women with y'all shoes with his hats. Good God am I. And be looking good into it. <laughs> we gonna call him that bishop hat. Look at this now. He said here, faith that does not result in the good deed is not real faith. But what Jesus did is that he planted a seed. See, when you're not doing what God wants you to do, and do you hear this kind of word? Guess what God's doing? He's planting a seed. Because one plant, another comes in water, and God gets the increase. I, I wish I could talk to somebody. I can't deliver you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, no matter how much I talk to you, I can't deliver you. Now give God a good hand clap if you believe that truth. So when Jesus, three years prior, 
came to the city. He spoke to the woman. She ran into the city. She shared the word. But there was no fruit to be developed at the time she delivered. They even said, we don't. We heard what you said, but we got to see it for ourselves. They had to try to satisfy their sight senses. Amen. If you understood the Bible study on uh, Wednesday, you would hear what I meant when I broke down sense, uh, knowledge, faith. But I ain't going to do it now. So go back and look at it. But look at it. So they left, but no change. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But something happened. It took three years for that seed that was deposited to Germany. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, neighbor, all them people you witnessing to, that, that seed ain't died. You ought to give God a good hand clap. God, God sees. Listen, let me. I hear it in the Holy Ghost. God sees don't die. Oh, let me say it again because it feels mighty good to know that my labor ain't in vain. God sees don't die. Come on, say it out loud and give God a prayer. God sees don't die. So if his seed don't die, somebody. May not come when you want them, but it'll be on time. So, so three years ago, a seed was planted, but God didn't forget. Tell your neighbor, God don't forget now. He keeps good records. And when the time of germination was now beginning to come forth, God was creating something in Jerusalem that caused the evangelist to come on time. Oh, I wish I could talk to somebody. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. Tell your neighbor, he's an on-time God. May not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. Might not show his mighty hand, but he'll be there on time. Just stick around and watch what God do. Let me finish this. In Acts 8 and 5, the Bible says, Then Philip, because it was now time, went down to a city where seeds had been planted. Look at your neighbor said, Neighbor, I want to encourage you right now that your labor is not in vain. When you look at your children and they're acting kind of crazy, I want to remind you that your labor is not in vain. You that are suffering and going through in your body, you got to preach the word to your own self. I wish I could talk to somebody. Sometime I got to tell my body, I'm not going to listen to you today. I got to rehearse the word of God and by his stripes I'm already here. Sometime I got to tell myself that I got to pat myself on my own back and said you're doing a good job. The Bible said David had to encourage himself. You need to look at your neighbor and say neighbor I believe I'm going to take time to encourage myself. Give God a good praise right there. So now, the time clock is moving. It seemed like it took a long time. I don't know who I'm talking to. Seemed like it's taken a long time for the answer to your prayer. But I want you to tell your neighbor, he's going to be right there on time. Don't rush God. Don't try to figure him out. It took three years for him. It might take a little longer for you. But one thing, one thing I want to tell you, that even though God didn't show up when you thought he should show up, the Bible shows us that Philip was still faithful. What about you? Are you still faithful? Even though God hasn't answered you. 
it seems like it get worse sometimes. But are you still faithful? Things are going up and down. But are you still faithful? Are you still calling on his name? Are you still praising his name? I want to ask you, are you still faithful? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the question has gone out. Are you still faithful? Give me just a little more time. The Bible says then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and he preached Christ. See, you got to keep on preaching Christ. See, I know sometimes I get some bad looks. That's why I'll take off my glasses. Because see, now I can read the scripture up there on the other wall. But when I think that I'm stepping on toes, I'll take my glasses off. Because I don't got time to look at your disagreement. I ain't got time to look at you looking nasty. I ain't got time to look at you not receiving. Because I want to ask somebody today, what are you receiving? <laughs> because see, if you're not receiving, you'll still stay attached to your demon. You'll still stay attached to satanic influence. You'll still be disagreeable. You still won't be able to advance. And most of all, you won't be happy. He preached Christ. Is that what I'm doing? Look at your neighbor and say, he ain't getting your business. He preaching Christ. Look at what it says here. It says, amen. And the people with one accord, with what? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you're receiving this word right here, we're going to have a blessed day. I'm going to take it by faith. If, you take, if you're taking heed to this word, you're going to go back home and have a great time. If you receive this word, you'll walk out talking faith and power. If you receive this word, things won't look dark no more. If you receive this word, it won't be hopeless no more. If you receive this word, you have power to cast out devils, walk on scorpions, and believe in the power. Tell your neighbor, what are you receiving? Y'all sit down now, because I got to finish this. Said so it gave he, are you hearing what the Holy Ghost said? They gave he, what does that mean? They hung on every word. They, they, they wasn't sitting back like, prove it, preacher. I ain't got to prove nothing to you. For as far as I know, it's working for me. And I'm sharing it with you. Whether you receive it or not, that's on you. I wish I could talk to somebody. They hung on every word. Not only that, the crowd listened intensively. I love it when I see people writing notes. Because they ain't letting this just be another sermon. I love Sister Gladys and Sister Yvonne. Because you know what? They just about get a tape every Sunday to build their spiritual library. You might have one left. <laughs> Let me leave that alone. They, the word was so powerful that demons inside of those that were under the anointing of the word of God began to cry out. I wish I could talk to somebody. Because the Bible says and the people gave heed one accord unto those things which Philip spake. Somebody say, hearing. hearing. Now what does happen when you hear when you receive a word from God? Faith begins to come. See, you can't obtain faith with rejecting and not receiving what God said. 
That's why I got to ask you, what are you receiving? Because the word is being preached, but what are you receiving? Oh, I wish I could tell you. So because they were intensely listening, they had given total regard to the word, amen, faith began to work. Now, God doesn't want you to be ignorant, so it says here, and seeing. God confirmed his word with signs, wonders, and miracles. They were able to see, they were able to see the results of receiving God's word. Somebody that got a testimony, you ought to look at somebody and say, listen, I received it and got a breakthrough. Now, you ought to hit a note on that one right there. I received it and got a breakthrough. Come on, look at somebody else and tell them, I received the word and got a breakthrough. I was nasty as all. And God delivered me because I received. The word of God. And so seeing satisfied their sense knowledge of faith. And the miracles which he did. Look at somebody around you and just tell them, what are you receiving? Now all this preaching I've done thus far, I call it preaching. Uh, you might have another opinion. You might sit, call it getting on your nerve. That's okay. I'm not living for your opinion. But Hebrews tells us in Hebrews 4 and 2, it says, For unto us was the gospel preached. Look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, it has always caused bewilderment to me that the preacher can preach and I get happy. And I look over at somebody else, and they look like they died. You know why? Because the Bible says, for unto us was the gospel preach, as well as unto them. But the word preach did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them, that heard it. So you can hear and still not receive. So I got to ask you, what are you receiving? You're still trying to figure out whether you want to really get all in. What are you, crazy? God has shown power. He has kept you through storms. He has provided for you and you still won't yield because you still stuck on belief. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, are you still stuck on belief? Or are you adding some faith now? Listen to this. As I always, and I've already said to you, that if you are enjoying your demons, then you are unable to cast that spirit out. So I got to ask, what are you receiving? Because if you're receiving the word, God will give you power. Nah, I've been smoking since I was 12. And I got saved. At 20. Now I'm 70. I love the Lord. Because he first loved me. All the many years you still just believe. With no faith. Because you love that demon. Ah. Uh, and they make it look so tempting and enjoyable on TV. 
They show the partying folks. 